for those that doesn't know Luis, Luis leads Emilex editorial strategy, content direction and development. Uh, he has a reputation for breaking stories and providing analysis on complex legal disputes before regulators and courts around the globe. A graduate of Oxford University. Um, are you listening to us? I hope. Um, again, a graduate of Oxford University. Louis worked in academia and at uh, Charles uh, University in Prague prior to becoming a journalist. Uh, thanks to Louis, uh, we've learned what's going on in the courtroom in cases again, Google, Amazon, Apple. Statements like, all roads lead to Chrome, not Rome. Or if your search engine is so good, why did you use pre-installation contracts to force it on user phones? Objection by the European Commission. We've learned of those sentences thanks to Louis, thanks to his live reporting from the courtroom. Dear Louis, are you listening to us? <laughs> Sorry, I can hear you. I, can you Perfect. Hear me? Perfect. Ah, Perfect. That. That's what we need. We didn't want to miss you, Luis. <laughs> I, I, I said I said that uh, the travel ban was faster than than your plane, um, and we are really sorry for that. But we are really happy that uh, you can join us virtually. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the mood in the courtroom? How would you describe the? Um, uh, how would you? describe the, the general mood in the courtroom at all these cases. Um, how convincing is the commission? How convincing are the gatekeepers? That's a good question. And, you know, thanks again for inviting uh, a journalist to your esteemed event you know, for the second year running. I apologize for not being able to make it. You know, um, I've covered a lot of these cases sitting at the back of the room and you know, looking at the backs of lawyers' heads as they, uh, as they argue their way around tricky legal things. And you do get a bit of an insight into how companies behave or how they want to be perceived. And, you know, while a lot of the debate, like the debate we've just heard, a lot of it is about regulation, um, you, know, the, you know, the words of the judges, the judges do have the final word, as we've seen from the Google shopping uh, judgment, you know, a week or two ago. It really, they really are powerful, powerful messages from the courts. You know, the biggest problem with the hearings is they take ages. It takes ages for the case to come out. Uh, that's part of the part of the issue which new regulation is trying to trying to solve. I mean, when I um, I went to the Intel hearing, Intel was the biggest find at the time. I went to the hearing and it was a five day hearing. I left after day four to get married um, and I went back to another hearing in Intel and I've now got two children, one's eight and one's six. Uh, this is not a statement about my reproductive efforts. It's more a statement of the slowness of the court. It's still going with this case nearly 20 years on. So, you know, don't expect um, uh, answers quickly. But to come to your question about, you know, what's it like in the courtroom? Well, essentially, the court hearings on these cases are part theatre and part law school. So the theatre is always the beginning. There's always these big opening statements which are made in this easy language. They're meant for, for people like me, for the press who are at the back of the room, and they tell the stories of the, of the big benefits of the Internet, of search, of the power of the iPhone, how we can buy anything we want online. Uh, those are meant for my ears. They're also meant for the ears of judges who haven't done any reading on the case, and there usually are some judges who haven't done that. Uh, you know, during this phase, you get a lot of good lines. I remember the commission uh, saying about Microsoft, Microsoft had been fined for not obeying the law, and the commission said Microsoft was like a gambler who doubled down and lost. And then the Google hearing, Microsoft, um, the commission said, you know, Google is a colossus, and its algorithms consigned rival services to the darkness that lies beyond page two, you know, like some sort of apocalypse. These are all things which the press, you know, write down furiously, they make for good copy. But when it comes to the companies, the Googles, the Microsofts, and so forth, generally, they try to seem very reasonable and very approachable. The public debate about what they do is, is a massive storm. It's a, a total tempest about, you know, everything that they do with data and, and their intrusion into our lives and so forth. But when they appear in court, they go, tend to go quiet and they go reasonable and they pick one or two arguments. Uh, one example is um, when uh, Apple was in court about its tax bill. You might remember the case about uh, uh, arrangements in, it, in Ireland. 
uh, worth 13 billion in tax breaks. And it was Ireland which had the lawyers that were going red in the face, banging the table, saying this is outrageous, that the European Commission will you know, intrude in the sovereignty and the fiscal policy of Ireland. And then it was Apple's lawyer who stood up and said quietly, but we're just doing what we can do according to the law. And please you know, understand, we're just, we're just a company like any other doing its business. So that's the way that these things pan out. You know, in the past, you get older industrial companies, French cases, German cases, where you get the lawyers who start off with, this is an outrageous case, and what would the founding fathers of the union think if they could see this case before them? You know, you, there was a lot of that 10 years ago. There isn't anymore. You know, people go quietly when they're the companies. On the other side of the room, the commission also generally goes quietly. It, it also avoids any of the big philosophical battles about the future of the internet and quo vadis, antitrust law, all they have to prove, all they have to answer is the question, is there anything wrong in my decision, to which the answer is always no. So um, it, it's, it's, it's imbalanced in the room. You get then the uh, uh, complainants. These are often companies who've suffered a lot at the hands of big tech. They've gone out of business. They've got uh, litigation in national courts, and they come in very, very forcefully. They feel very passionate. This is their day in court. This is their day to finally tell the judges how they got exploited by, by the large tech companies. So that's for the theatre. Then quickly it, defends in, it descends into law school. Uh, after those opening statements, most of the press either leave or you know, uh, start doing Sudoku on their laptops. Uh, and then the debate goes into you know, abstract concepts which are very difficult to write about. Uh, then the, the press wake up again a little bit later at the end when there's a debate about the, the fine. You know, there's always big fines. The, commission always, the company always says the fine is too high. And the commission says, well, you know, it could have been higher. Count yourself lucky. So that's, that's how these things go. You know, the judgment's the same. When the judgment comes, like it did a couple of weeks ago, there's the theater part of it, which is you know, who's the winner, who's the loser. And then there's the law school part, which is the very, very difficult assessment of the essential facilities criteria or whatever. But that sort of fight to be the winner um, is always a big play. You get these cases, um, particularly ones that come out of the WTO, where it's Europe against America, the WTO rules, and the, you get two press releases. America welcomes the judgment. Europe welcomes the judgment. If both people welcome the judgment, there's something got to be wrong. So that <laughs> happens. that happens as well. But so it's, it's a lot of it is theatre, and then a lot of it is, is, is law school. And that was the same for the Google case. The theatre part was about the future of the internet and whether Amazon was a place which was just as easy to shop on. You know, and the law school part was all about abstract theories on, on essential facilities. Uh, so you get both these elements. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. The current drive of uh, regulations and intervention in big touch has been much uh, has been driven by the investigations of, of Google by the European Commission that started 10 years uh, ago. Uh, what's the role of media uh, and how important um, are journalist briefings for what we have today? Finally, DMA on the table and much more pressure on enforcers. I think journalistically, um, it's been a really interesting journey about 10 years ago. There was, or even longer, 20 years ago with Microsoft, there was only ever really one tech story at a time. It was Microsoft, and then it was Intel, and then it was Google. And we would all hunt in a pack, and you're just trying to get anything on this one investigation into the shopping case. And you would you know, follow the then commissioner, Joaquin Almunia, around, and every time he you know, uh, stepped out of the toilet, you would run at him with your record, you know, uh, dictaphone going, Google, 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 hoping he would say something. You know. um, it's, a, it's just a lot more difficult now. Why? Because there are investigations everywhere. It's almost ridiculous. Every day, every week, there's a new probe of some sort. Um, ridiculous in terms of how we, how we can cover it. There's, the, there's new investigations on national law, on amended national laws, on EU law in the US. There's litigation and so forth. And it's very difficult to track all of those and give them all the scrutiny they deserve because they're all, you know, 
difficult or novel or important in different ways. So I think it's just it's just a challenge. In the past, the Google Shopping case was the lens through which everyone looked at future tech regulation. The lens now is you know it's like a it's like an insect's eye. It's just it's just uh, you know it's there's 20, 30, 40, 50 sort of views going on at the same time. I think the tech cases as well are a double-edged sword for regulators. Um, they're a very good way for regulators to show their relevance. You know, people know about the iPhone in their pocket or the Amazon, you know, thing that they bought for Christmas. It's a very good way for regulators to get close to their, um, to their uh, citizens. Uh, at the same time, if they don't deliver for those citizens, and these cases can be and are difficult cases that require clever people, resources, and sometimes novel theories. And if you don't deliver with that case, and at the end of it, you haven't been seen to repair the internet or make your you know, phone cheaper or allow greater choice, uh, then the pain that you receive and the criticism that you receive afterwards is all the greater. So I think it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, finally, as you said, on the, on the DMA, the DMA will change things for reporters to date. Basically, it's been about running after a handful of antitrust cases, which in their essence are very secretive. And they always have, um, on the one hand, a bunch of people who are complaining and often vocal, and then a tech company which is trying to be quiet and create a space where it can talk to you know, regulators about remedies or whatever. And the DMA changes this because you don't get long running secret probes anymore. You'll have shorter timelines. The complainants will have a different role. You know, um, what kind of stories will we write? The story will be, you know, you know, Apple designated as a platform of you know, cross-border importance, you know, the sort of designation story, and then another story later about what the remedies are and so forth. It's, it's, it's a different thing, not the kind of Google faces billion dollar fine over, which is the standard story which you know, a, a journalist writes. So, uh, you know, you'll get lots of, as ever with new legislation, lots of procedural nerdy stories um, about, you know, someone appealing this particular article. And we'll have to sort of get those out the way first, I think. Uh, so there's going to be, it's going to be um, a challenge for reporters um, uh, and taking this kind of, you know, creating a, there's be a brand new framework to follow. But, you know, we've, We've done that, and people do that. We've done that for telecoms. We've done it for energy. It does. It, it exists in the press as well as it does in regulation. Okay. So you're quite optimistic when it comes to DMA. Uh, what's your forecast? DMA enters into force, like let's say in six months. When is your when is your first live reporting from the courtroom regarding <laughs> Article Five and the so-called <laughs> self-executing I mean, norms? No, I think there'll be a, a the the. Um, yeah, there'll be uh, stories on the actual cases which it produces, but I think there'll also be someone will, through some vehicle or other, dispute the entire law and its legal basis. I think that's, you know, that, that will happen. It happened with the roaming regulation. Uh, it was the UK telecoms providers who went to the ECJ, you know, sort of manufactured, created, navigated a route to the ECJ to say this has been adopted under the wrong legal basis. And I think, I think people will do that, essentially arguing this is a... Um, uh, a piece of competition law, which is, you know, expropriating us and the way it was adopted and the way it's got had it, its, its legal underpinnings is, is uh, doesn't correspond to that. I think we'll see that. That case will probably come much later. Uh, but I reckon uh, it depends a bit on the regulators how quickly they um, they choose to designate and you know, stick to the timelines, which seem to concertina in the in the amendments. But I, uh, my, my point of comparison will be the German law, where um, the Bundeskartellamt has opened, you know, cases under 19A GWB into all the big tech companies to sort of, you know, designate them. And we still haven't had any news on that. So, you know, um, and that's a, a big grown up regulator looking at big grown up companies. It, it will take time. Thank you very much. Uh, please continue reporting from the courtroom in unconventional language. Uh, it really <laughs> makes a lot of fun. Now we have a small break and Luis is going to join the discussion later again with us. Many thanks. Thanks very much.